All right, welcome back. This is uh, part six of chapter four. Yeah? Uh, we are in chapter four. Let me just bring this down uh, a little bit. Okay. All right. Okay, yeah, we continue from where we left off in clip number four. Okay, so here what we have done is we, uh, in equation number four, what we have done is the change in cumulative retained earnings uh, is actually the retained earnings for the year. Yeah? So this change in cumulative retained earnings is actually retaining, uh, retained earnings for the year. And this is computed, uh, we have seen in the previous clip, yeah, in chapter uh, three. Uh, retain earnings is net income minus dividend. Yeah? So NI minus dividend uh, will be retained earnings. Yeah? Now this NI minus dividend can also be expressed as this. Yeah? NI multiplied by 1 minus D. Yeah? This small d is actually the dividend payout ratio. So this is exactly the same as that. Yeah? So dividend is actually NI multiplied by D. Okay. So here we can also expand this slightly to include uh, like a formula, yeah. So this can be expanded or expressed, yeah. This ni multiplied by one minus d, which is also retained earnings, as this, yeah. Now this net income uh, divided by sales, yeah. This is a ratio, yeah. And this ratio is called profit margin ratio, yeah, or net profit margin ratio, multiplied by this is s one, yeah. This is actually s o plus change in s change in sales and yeah? this is the current level of sales plus the increased or change level in sales therefore this is the new sales level or s1 yeah? this within bracket yeah s1 then multiplied by 1 minus d which is the same as this yeah so it's actually profit margin multiplied by the new level of sales multiplied by 1 minus the dividend payout ratio yeah so this is actually the internal financing provided by operation yeah? so this is the internal financing okay and this can be written as this yeah? you can remember this formula here yeah? all right then we move on to the next part okay now we look we expand yeah the remaining items yeah? in equation number uh, three yeah in equation number three so now the change in spontaneous assets yeah, can be expressed as this. This is a ratio. This ratio is uh, spontaneous assets divided by sales multiplied by change in sales. Yeah? Now this ratio yeah, is similar to the ratio that we have seen in chapter 3. Okay? In chapter 3, we have seen a ratio which is sales divided by assets. Yeah? That's called turnover ratio, asset turnover ratio or total asset turnover ratio now here it's the opposite yeah? the reciprocal of that yeah we, we don't take sales divided by assets but we take assets divided by sales yeah so therefore this is actually called capital intensity ratio yeah? capital intensity ratio so here the more assets the company used to generate one dollar of sales then the company is more capital intensive yeah, assuming that the company is operating at optimal capacity, yeah, right, optimally, yeah. So therefore, uh, this is this ratio is also called capital intensity ratio, assets divided by sales, yeah. Likewise, the change in spontaneous liability can be expressed this way, yeah. Spontaneous liability divided by sales in the same format as this or similar format as this, multiplied by change in sales, yeah. So this will be the uh, spontaneous financing. This will be the total financing needed yeah, for the company. This will be the spontaneous financing given. And earlier we saw the internal financing. Yeah. So the remaining three components here, change in non-spontaneous liability plus change in common stock minus yeah, change in uh, non-spontaneous asset and yeah? note that this is pink yeah slightly not red as here yeah okay i'll explain this why okay these three components we can consider th this to be external financing needed yeah or these are the other elements in equation number three remember there are six elements yeah six elements or six components one element is the retained earnings we have uh, covered that in equation number four in equation number five, we have covered another element, which is change in spontaneous assets. 
uh, and then equation number six uh, looks at the change in spontaneous liability yeah so three elements in the six elements yeah in equation three has been accounted for now the remaining three in, uh, elements in equation three you lump them together here and this is considered to be external financing needed okay external is uh, very uh, uh, rather, I wouldn't say very, but rather yeah, inappropriate term here. Some books call this additional financing needed, which I think is better. Yeah? But here, since it says external financing, so this only covers common stock, issue of com common stock and also issue of debt, yeah? so which are non-spontaneous. Yeah? These two can be considered external. But this change in non-spontaneous asset, and this includes change in cash and also change in uh, fixed assets. Yeah? Uh, so this cannot be considered external, yeah? but this can be a, a mode of financing or a, a source of financing, which is uh, from the sale of assets in the company. Yeah? So this can also be a form of financing. You can sell the assets, you get some funds, and these funds can be used to purchase other assets that are required. Yeah? So these are the other elements. So this will become EFN. Yeah? Now with this equation, these three equations, yeah, we replace these three equations, 4, 5, and 6, into equation number 3. Yeah? 4, 5, 6, and 7. Yeah? We replace, therefore, we have EFN on the left-hand side, and all the other elements on the right hand side. Yeah? So we have this, which is here, which is change in spontaneous asset. And this change in liability is here, the second element here. And the third element is from equation number four. Yeah? This is uh, retained means or internal financing. All right, so this is uh, equation number eight. Yeah? And you need to remember this equation. This is the EFN formula or external financing needed formula. All right, this external financing needed formula is repeated here, okay, and we try and explain yeah, each element. So there are actually uh, three elements on the right hand side of the equation and one element on the left hand side. Yeah? Let's look at each element in turn. Now this element, the first element is the expected increase in spontaneous assets, yeah, as you can see here. Uh, this is also the expected total financing needed. So based on the increase in sales, okay, by using this uh, formula, we determine the change in assets that are required okay, to support this change in sales. So this will be the total financing required for purchasing new assets. Yeah? Now the second element okay, is the expected spontaneous financing. This comes from spontaneous liability over sales multiplied by the change in sales yeah so this will be the expected spontaneous financing the second element yeah so this minus that not this yeah? it's minus yeah? not add yeah? and then the third element will be this expected internal financing this comes from gradient earnings yeah and this is profit margin multiplied by the new sales level multiplied by one minus d yeah one minus the dividend payout ratio so this will be your uh, three components on the right. Yeah? So the left will be what you uh, expect, yeah? expected external financing needed. This is EFN. Yeah? So this is the total financing. But if you add these three, yeah? one, two, and three, this must be equal to that. But because we want to express this equation in terms of EFN, so we bring yeah? these two to the right hand side. Therefore, you have negative yeah? here. This minus these two, will be the external financing needed. Let's say the total financing needed is 1 million, okay, just for the sake of understanding, yeah, 1 million uh, is the required yeah, increase in assets and you need 1 million to buy those assets. So you need 1 million dollars of financing. But some of it, let's say 20,000 uh, or 200,000 yeah, is provided by spontaneous financing yeah, by increase in payables. And let's say another yeah, 600,000 comes from internal financing from retail earnings. So the remainder, you need 1 million, 2 million, uh, 200,000 is already given by 
spontaneous sources. Another 600,000 is given by internal financing. So the remainder, yeah, which is another 20,000, uh, sorry, 200,000 must come from external sources. So you need to borrow or to issue shares so that you get uh, 200,000 more. Yeah? So 200,000 external financing, for example, 200,000 here and 600,000 here. Yeah? So in total, 1 million. Yeah? Uh, so it matches this 1 million here. Right. Now this formula, there is an alternative to this, this formula. Sometimes the change in sales is given as a growth rate. Yeah, let's say 10% increase like in the case of uh, Tasha Toy Emporium and also in terms of Gourmet Coffee. You were not given the increase in sales yeah, in absolute dollar terms. You are given in uh, percentage change. Yeah? So G here is the growth rate yeah, in percentage of sales. Yeah? That means this is the growth rate in sales given in percentage terms. So if you are given this, then you need to replace the change in sales, the absolute value with this. Yeah? So you can replace it here. Okay? Then you find that the formula is slightly different. Yeah? So you restate equation number 8 as equation number 10. Yeah? Which is exactly the same. Yeah? It's not different. It's still EFN or external financing needed. Okay, so this is equal to this first element. Okay, where's the cursor? I can't see the cursor. Okay, this first element is equal to this first element here, and this is the expected total financing needed. Yeah, and the second element here is the same as the second element here, and this is the expected spontaneous financing. Yeah, and the third element here is equal to the third element here, which is the expected internal financing. Of course, EFN is EFN, yeah? EFN here, because say it's missing again, yeah? This EFN here is the same as EFN here, and this is the expected external financing needed. Okay, yeah, so with that, we uh, look at the formula. We have used, uh, we have looked at the formula. Now, let's look at the formula when it's placed on the uh, illustration, yeah? The diagram that we have seen earlier, yeah? This is the new sales level, okay? So, with... The change in sales, we are given the change in absolute terms, then we can determine S1, the new level of sales, by this formula. SO plus the uh, absolute increase in sales, yeah? you get S1 or new sales level. But if you are given the rate, yeah, change in the growth rate yeah, or growth rate in sales, then we take SO multiplied by 1 plus G, this will be your new S1, yeah? right? It depends. So, for depends on how the information is given, yeah. So, in Tasha Toy Emporium and Gourmet Coffee, you are given this uh, G, yeah, rather than this. So, we have used this formula, All right? Then, from in the income statement, after forecasting sales, the next step is to forecast the new net income level. So, this, if you are given the delta S, you use this formula profit margin multiplied by the new sales level. If you are given the growth rate, then you use this formula, yeah? Net income multiplied by 1 plus G. Okay, 1 plus the growth rate. Then, given the dividend policy, you can compute the dividend policy. New dividend payout ratio, based on the dividend payout ratio. Okay, so this value here, this uh, expression here, multiplied by D, will be the dividend payout for the year. If you are taking, you are given G, for example, the growth rate, then it's just this element multiplied by D. Yeah? Either way, it's just multiplied by the dividend payout ratio. This is dividend payout ratio. Okay, then the remainder yeah, will be your retained earnings. Therefore, this, okay, minus from this. Yeah? Therefore, it'll be 1 minus this D. Yeah? This yeah? is the same element as this. But rather than multiplying by D, you multiply here with 1 minus D. Yeah? That is your internal financing provider. If you are given the growth rate, then the formula would be this. Yeah? If you are given the growth rate here, then the formula of retained earnings will be this. Yeah? All right, and this is the internal financing provider. Yeah? Next, we move on to the balance sheet. Balance sheet, we uh, based on the change in... Uh, sales here, either it's given like this or like this, then we can forecast the change in assets. The formula is this, okay, if you are given the change in 
assets in absolute terms.